leave me here like this with this stuff rolling, man. I need some adult supervision. <laughs> you want to get into this? No, I mean, tell me. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Right, hang on. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. <clears throat> I'm an actor. So what do you want me to say? Want me to talk about my worst, worst drugged out in the gutter experiences? Cause, cause I ain't hit rock bottom yet, so I don't think I can talk about it. I, you have a West of tea it, it, it's just T W Tango whiskey, man. You goddamn pockeropsies, man, with your fancy cameras and your fancy microphones, man, and your fancy suspenders and your toy poodles and shit like that, man. It's like that's all you need to know, man. You don't ask me questions. You don't ask me questions unless you're going to shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up if you're going to ask me a question. You got me now? It's my interview. It's my interview. Damn right. Everybody knows who I am. Everybody in Charlottesville knows who Kentucky, Montana is. Oh, you still rolling? You still recording? Well, God damn it. I'm sorry about that. Taking the Lord's name in vain. My name is Kentucky, Montana. Charlottesville's number one bar. My name, what the hell? Everybody knows my damn name, Not Kentucky, Montana. There's been a lot of guys in and out of the band uh, through the years, a lot of different keyboard players. Uh, Keith had uh, approached me about uh, uh, joining the Whiskey Sharks, and um, at that point in time, I was. Uh, kind of in the middle of uh, this alien abduction and um, and plus the the old Chevy broke down which is pretty much commonplace what happens with an old Chevy and um, anyway long story short I, I just uh, I could not um, I couldn't commit you know but uh, but I, I still think that, like the whiskey shards is, is really just like you know kind of um, almost like a, a religion to me I remember when the whiskey shards first got started Stan Mason Dixon, Trace Crooks, good friends of mine. He came to the bar and was talking about, we want to get ourselves a band, about 1968. And they came through, they had a little band and everything, but I was like, you need a little more. They need a bassist and they need a drummer. So, put a little sign up in the Whiskey Shark Saloon that said, bassist and drummer needy. We still recording? Yeah. All right. The Jimmy Woods and Rico came together. I don't really understand what Rico do. He be banging on them drums and everything else. Uh, Rico, man, Rico, what a drummer! Man, that guy's a guy's a great drummer. Um, personally, I don't know what to tell you about him because I've known him for 45 years and he still hasn't learned to speak English. So, I don't really know the guy personally. But I like to think of myself as uh, still as a you know part of the band or you know at least like a family member. You know, kind of like that uh, that third cousin you know that's been uh, once removed you know for indecent exposure. You know, I'm kind of like that guy that's uh, like, like that neighbor that walks around the yard, you know, wearing like boxer shorts or speedos and cowboy boots and stuff like that. But you just love them and you got to invite them to like, you know, like barbecues and family outings and, and things like that. Jimmy Woods. Jimmy Woods, damn near best bassist I ever heard in Charlottesville. He's on traveled everywhere and did everything. Jimmy Woods been playing for a lot of people. Let me tell you, I seen it. I was guaranteed. He bum 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 bum. I ain't never seen a man slap at a bass the way he do. And Jimmy Woods, he's the bass player. That's right. I'm the crook. Everybody wants the crook hook. They talk about the crook hook. It's kind of my, uh, sort of my nickname. It's, it means a couple different things. The crook hook is uh, if I come up with a with a, with a decent guitar riff, you know, a hook, a musical hook, then everybody, a producer one time, it's, it was actually a producer that coined the coined the term. Um, anybody remember who that was? Yeah, it was Prey Producer. He said when I came up with a with a riff for something, I don't even remember what somebody said. That's it. That's the crook hook. And we were doing a song with Keith, and then he said. It's, it's almost there, it needs the crook hook. Vocals are all good, we just need to, need, need to add something to it, some kind of melodic guitar riff to hook people in, make it uh, more, 
I don't want to say sellable, that's not the right word, but to make it more of a hit, to make give, give, give it that crook hook, he said. Keith fucking Jackson, it's true, that's his real name. When Jimmy, Jimmy Woods and Rico came inside and they started playing and got together with Stan Mason Dix and Trace Crooks, it's good sound, and they've been playing for a long time, since 68. Everything was going real good. Got a nice band, good sound, traveling everywhere in Charlottesville, but there was something missing. I needed some personality, some flair. It wasn't until the 90s that this boy, actually the boy my mama raised, Keith fucking Jackson came to the scene. When Keith fucking Jackson came, everything changed. First time that I met Keith fucking Jackson, uh, we was at this uh, this bar. It was just, uh, just on the outskirts of Charlottesville. I think it was uh, County Route 69. And uh, this place, you know, like they got, uh, they got karaoke seven nights a week. They start at noon on um, on Saturdays and stuff. And uh, and I'd already been there, you know, and um, I was hanging out with these ladies, you know, and uh, they they were, you know, they kind of bought me some shots of tequila, you know, which, uh, I mean, I got mad respect for the ladies, you know, because like in, in my mind, I mean, they are either, either naked or they are in the kitchen or they are buying me shots of tequila. I mean, I got mad respect like that. And that's just, you know, that's just the way that I am. Man, what a guy. It's just, it's been, it's been hard on me not having my uncle around. We were really close, but having Keith in my life's helped. You know, he's, he's been a good friend. We, we've accomplished a lot together creatively. And man, does he get the women. The, the ladies just love Keith and, um, I'm telling you, if you're, you gotta be, if, if you're there for the fallout, you'll be a happy guy. I ain't never seen women throw panties on the stage till I seen fucking Keith fucking Jackson walk up and just grab that microphone. The minute he grabbed that microphone, them women was like, oh! I gotta give him man props. That man got some good stuff going on. He'll take his little trucker's hat, dip it down, and take tips from all the women. Keith fucking Jackson walks up to me, you know, that's before I knowed him. I'll tell you what, what. And he came up and he, he put his hand on my shoulder, you know, kind of like a friend would. And uh, and he said, boy, you're pretty good. You know, and uh, I think I said, you know, this is after I heard sang like Freebird like about four times that night. And uh, and I, but I ended up, I, I said, uh, I said, do what now? I said, I got your boy right here and you get your goddamn hand off my shoulder. Well, I ended up, I, you know, I'm sad to say, but I, I jumped up and I punched him right in his goddamn face. I did punch him in his goddamn face. I mean, you go ask him if you don't believe me. I did. And then, uh, well, he ended up, man, he took that punch pretty good, man. He was like, kind of like, boom, you know, like that. And, uh, well, he ended up, man, he punched me in my goddamn face. And uh, I was like, whoa, man, you know. I was like, I, I, w I didn't really expect that. You know, he don't have really big hands or nothing. But he, you know, he punched me in my goddamn face. And I was like, whoa. And then, uh, you know, I stepped up and we kind of, you know, bowed up, we squared off on each other and then we kind of, I kind of had this epiphany, you know, and, uh, and we both looked at each other and at the exact same time, we both said, we should start a band, man. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what, man, after that, you know, we were shaking hands and we walked up to the bar and got us a, a, a tall frosty mug of whiskey and a shot of beer because that's, that's what was on special that day. And um, we ended up, man, we, you know, I guess we've been friends ever since, you know. But uh, it wasn't uh, that long after that that he was uh, involved in the Whiskey Sharts. And, uh, man, that's when I really just kind of realized that, man. It, when, you, when you hear the man, I mean, he is like a, a, like a shaman. I mean, he is a lyrical and a musical genius. Keith Jackson put that mouth to the microphone and people just melt. Men and big ass bikers would just get all curly inside and just support that music. People was throwing their cowboy hats everywhere. Rodeos were going crazy. All for Whiskey Sharks, one of the best bands I ever heard. I gotta get home. I gotta get home. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Just, just do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mind. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. Kentucky, Montana. Call me by my first name, though. Kentucky. When I was a child, I mean, this one, uh, these neighbors, they had this, um, this dog, this, this old bird dog, and uh, her name was uh, Betsy, but we called her Duke. Everybody wants some of the crook hook. All right, here's, 
Well, we might in Charlottesville in America right now. You know, get out there and you teach that bird dog how to whistle. You know, because then, you, you know, you take the dog out hunting and it'll be able to whistle out bird calls. So, you know, it makes sense to me, I mean, at the time. Oh, I got you. What's the C look like? Here is Charlottesville. We had this dog, man, we'd hold its mouth and stuff like that, and we'd say, go on, blow, you know, blow. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's got, you know, figure out how to, get, how to, get, how to lose this, lose these fingers. Why are you just mouthing words? <laughs> yeah, now, we, we took a lot of time trying to teach these bird dogs how to whistle. I mean, the closest we got is this one dog, it would, every now and then, it would, it would fart on cue, but, uh, well, come to find out, there ain't no way in hell you can teach a bird dog how to whistle. There ain't no way in hell. Everybody wants some of that crook hook. You still recording? I'm Kentucky, Montana. <laughs> <laughs>